Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. You see, it's, let's do a spring planter. Pardon the background noise, fountain's going. It's kind of loud. I'm sitting out here with this fun metal, whatever this is. I got this from Walmart a few years ago. It was with the like cups and glasses, so I think that it's made to, for the like chill drinks. I don't know. I drilled holes in the bottom of it and I use it for planting things up usually as a spring planter and sometimes I put some fall things in here. And it's that time of year, I wanna start getting going with some spring arrangements. For the first one, I want it to be one that's relatively small, something that I can move in and out of the house because we're still at sort of an unpredictable time of year. It's like 74 degrees today and beautiful, but in the extended forecast, it's showing lows in the 20s. I wanna be able to move it in and out of the house if need be. And this is just, it's a good shape for my counters. This will look nice in front of a window. Shallow containers are usually my preference for spring things, just bulbs in general. I don't know why. There's really no logical reason behind it. It's just what is the most appealing to me. I have a whole bunch of different plants here. I mean, these are all different daffodils. There are some violas in the back. In my last vlog, I did like a spring plant haul. That's everything I have. Haven't gotten anything more. I want to set this container up in a way so that when these daffodils are done blooming, which won't be too long, I mean, they're pretty covered in flowers. They still have a good amount of buds in them, but I would say probably in the next three and a half to four weeks, these will be done blooming. And then I'll want to have that height and color in the background again. But what I'm going to do with these, instead of unpotting them and putting their entire root mass down in there, I think that I'm just going to bury the pots. I've done that before and it worked out just fine. It was better for the daffodils when I did it that way because then when the daffodils are done blooming, can lift them out and still take care of the foliage of the plant and take care of the plant as it needs to be cared for so that you can save them and get them going again next year. Otherwise, I'll have to reach down in there, rip them out, and then they'll have to go through that stress of having their roots messed with. And I don't really want to mess with their roots as it is when they're in flower. If these pots felt more loose, then I really wouldn't think too much of it because there's enough space in this big container to go ahead and lift a big ball out. These are actually rooted in here pretty heavily. So I just don't want to disturb them too much. So I think what I'm going to do here is dig this out, plant those down, and then start filling in all the spaces in front with some fun, colorful flowers. And you may notice, it might be kind of hard to see on camera, but I do have the soil in here fairly high up and I compacted it a little bit. The only reason that I did that was because I want this to be somewhat mounded up so that I can put some sheet moss around in here. I just think that that looks nice has a good spring appeal to it. Could be mounted up higher than this, but I was thinking and figuring that by the time I actually have these pots in here, that that should displace enough of the soil for it to be up relatively high. I'm not positive, we'll see. If you've ever done a container where you have a slight elevation and a raise to the center of the pot, then you know the struggle of how hard it is to keep the soil managed while you're trying to get everything in the container. Usually you have to make adjustments and change things up because as you get going, the amount of soil that's displaced is going to change. Every time you throw another plant and you're gonna have more and more and more soil. That's another reason that I don't mind having these in the containers. It makes it easier to keep lifting them up and up and up since this is gonna be the highest point in here. I want this to be nice and high. It makes it easier than having to keep going down and lifting and pulling and lifting and pulling. I'm sure there's a more refined way to do it, but I've tried before just like making a ball so everything's up high and working my way around it. That's usually what people do, but I don't, it, with my brain, that's just, it's never worked out. Just do it more haphazardously and keep lifting and changing things as I go. I was hoping to work these Gerber daisies in here, but I feel like they might be, they might be too high. I don't want them to take away from the daffodils. There's only one way to find out. Never mind, I think that's fine. Keep pushing the soil around, keep lifting things up. In that one Gerber daisy, you can see how much higher the pots are starting to get because I keep having to keep pushing soil under and bringing them up. That's good though, that's what I wanted to happen here. Still seeing a lot of space in here to fill in. Don't have to fill in every gap, but I just, personally, it's just a matter of personal preference. I don't want just white and yellow. That's too much like, I don't know, eggs. It's not for me, this needs some more color. I'm thinking these violas would be good. I have pansies, but since I already have the large flowers from the Gerber daisies and then the smaller, more dainty daffodils, and I want this to not necessarily have a natural look to it, because I mean, it's in a metal container, but I do want it to look kind of like it was plucked out of nature and thrown into a pot. I 
I mean, it's a small garden. It's a container garden. That's the whole point here. Thinking I'll just put a few of these violas, one on this end, one in the middle, and one down on the other side. Okay, it's getting there still. Needs more color. Okay, some alyssum. The thing is, if I fill in too much, then I'm gonna be able to see the sheet moss, which adds a lot of appeal to this, being able to see that green. So I don't wanna go too heavy with the sweet alyssum or the lobular. I might just put one right here and one right there and just let that be it. I thought about putting a trailer in here like some Creeping Jenny, because I have it and it just, it grows so wonderfully. But since this is a container that may be in the house for a while, I don't know if I really want to have something that hangs down that I might have to pull and wrap around when I bring it in. That's really just me overthinking things. It's not that big of a deal to take the Creeping Jenny and wrap it up and around. It's pretty simple to do, it only takes a few seconds. For the last bit of color, I'm just gonna toss in a pansy, this is just the matrix mix, one on each end here. Oh, there it is. These Gerber daisies, my camera, the lens, I've tried every different setting. No matter what I do, they always look somewhat washed out. So hopefully they don't look too blown out and ridiculous. I turned my exposure down, they're still just like, whoa. It's such a clean, crisp white that it just, it reflects the light so much, which is great. The camera, it's kind of intense, but that's okay. Still have the sheet moss here. I put so much in this that it's like kind of unnecessary. I want to make sure though, to have that moss intertwined in here because this is all lifted up fairly high, as you saw when I was planting things up. And if I don't have something draping down across that mound of soil, then when I water, it's all just gonna wash right out. This helps add that wild, almost whimsical feel to it. That's it, I'm just gonna go through here, fill in all the gaps, and this is done. It's so nice to be out doing spring planters, and this came out just about exactly how I wanted it to. See why I wanted that mound there, so that that moss shows in the front. By doing that, it makes it look like there's a hill in the pot, which is just, I don't know why I like it. It's just something I'm always drawn to. Yeah, so there's just something fun, natural, whimsical-ish about it. If I had some fairy garden, like, picks to put in here, I think it would be neat to put some little toadstools or mushrooms in there. I have some small little, like, pastel-ish decorative eggs that I might stick in some of these crevices. Let's see about that later. For right now, this is fine. It's exactly what I wanted. Just a cute little chunk of spring cuteness. I don't have names for everything that's in here. The daffodils, I'm not going to try and say it, but here they are. They're a dwarf variety. That's as big as they're going to get. They have nice sturdy growth. They're really fun little daffodils. They bloom a lot. So these should be good for, I would say, at least another probably two to three weeks maybe even longer, already in bloom when I picked them up from the nursery. Since they were forced, I won't have as much time with them, but that's okay. When they're done blooming, I can just lift them out. I have some moss wrapped around them. I'll peel that back, and then I have some tulips that I'll drop in their place, and then those will be blooming for a while. And I have another set of tulips, the double light mix, which won't be blooming for several more weeks, and those will go in place of the other tulips. So this should have some color in it for quite a long time. The Gerber daisies, which I don't have a name for, they're just assorted, and they're just, white. I don't know what variety they are. Those should keep going for a while until things get fairly warm out, which I mean, we'll have warm days, but it won't be reliably warm here until probably late April to mid-May. Those daisies, the violas, the pansies. I hate I hate using pansies in plant videos because when you disturb the roots, they just throw an immediate fit. Look at that. Doesn't want to stand up. It's all right for me doing this with it doesn't help it. These were fairly well rooted. The pansies that are in here, these are the Matrix Morpheus. They're just the classic yellow and purple, yellow and blue pansies. Down here, these are the Crystal Clear Mix Alyssum Lobularia. That's why they're different colors, because it's a mix. And I kind of like that because it took the guessing work for me out of things. Sometimes I'll obsess a little bit too much when I have a lot to choose from. Since there are multiple colors in each one of the cells in that six pack, I was like, well, it just is what it is. If I want them in there, then that's what's going to have to be. They work well in here. They have a nice texture with their dainty little flowers and the color that's on these is just about right. It looks kind of dark on my viewfinder. I would prefer a lighter pink, but this is good. That's really just in there to help break things apart between the violas and all the other things that are in here, especially the Gerber daisies with the big foliage and the big flowers. It's something more dainty with some texture to it, and they smell great. So what's not to love about that? Love the smell of Lobularia. I unfortunately don't remember the name on these violas. I've already misplaced the tag, but I'll put it up here 
on the screen. Violas are some of my favorite spring flowers and fall flowers and winter, depending on if we have a good winter. They don't spread much. Pretty much what you plant is what you're going to get with them, but they flower so reliably during the core parts of spring and then in the late summer into the fall and sometimes even throughout winter, depending on where you live. For me, pansies and violas are just a classic spring plant. I really, I had to have them in here. Wouldn't be a spring planter in my backyard if there wasn't those cute little happy cheery faces in the planter. She's Gerber daisies, they're so stinking cute. Even their little buds, how they hang down and slowly come up and raise their little flower heads up to look at the sun. Something about them that's just so sweet and adorable. And I usually, with Gerber daisies, always go for the more bright, colors. I don't usually go for just plain white, but I'm glad I decided to mix it up and change things this year instead of going with those other colors. It's just that simple white. There's something really clean and fresh about it, which is part of spring, right? That's generally something I associate with spring. All right, that's going to do it. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everyone. What are some things you're doing with your spring gardens? Do you have particular plants that or just part of your spring container, something you can't not have. Like I was talking about with the pansies and violas, it's just, it's a classic spring staple. I gotta have them. Or tulips, hyacinths. Or we'll be here all day if I start listing off all the different spring flowers that I love. Yeah, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. You okay, Tobes? I don't know if that groan came through the camera. Are you ready to go inside? Kind of throwing it, oh, it's because your friend's up the hill barking, that's why. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.